So lots of people asking about the data and the plots I'm using to review the America's Cup videos. Where do they come from? What do the plots mean? What does it tell us about the performance of the yacht? And just to spend a little bit more time explaining that to you. I'm not sure I've got my headphones on, don't need them right now. Cover up the terrible bed hair. Right, anyway, straight into it, because I want to make this quite a short video. All credit on these plots. Um, must go to ERDB, Formite on Sailing Anarchy. I'm not sure if he wants his real name putting out there or not, but I'll put the link to his site um, in the background. The source of this data is the race management files from the America's Cup website that's put up on their notice board. I've already in a separate video complained that the race management files this time and the virtualized data is missing some key data like can't heal pitch which would be lovely to get even if we get power data that would be awesome as well alas it's not there so basically what you're really looking at here is just like a, a gps plot um, and course plot of the marks and true wind angle which is recorded as well um, derived from apparent wind angle and apparent wind speed recorded on the boat so that is the source of the data links in description for that and full credit to these plots to erdb because they are not mine I am just commentating on them. So first of all, you go into individual races and you first plots are all about straight line performance. And this is with a heavy filtering on the data. So it's removing the tax for upwind, removing the jives for downwind, removing kind of non-foiling time or time way off the wind. And what you're looking at in these plots is basically a um, frequency distribution um, of basically how much time did a boat spend at I mean this is boat speed at a certain boat speed upwind VMG how much time did they spend at a certain VMG how much time did they spend at a certain true angle so how close were they sailing to, to the wind and the lines you can see on the plot um, that's the thicker dash line is the median so that's the um, middle number um, so it's got equal amount of um, kind of instances above it and below it and then I think the smaller dashed lines are either a quartiles I believe um, but basically when you see that you know upwind boat speed you can see GBR is slightly higher median upwind boat speed so um, yeah that means that we're going faster through the water. The one we really care about is Velocity Made Good. Velocity Made Good, not to be confused with VMC, Velocity Made on the course. Velocity Made Good is to windward or to leeward. So it's regardless of where the boys are on the mark. So this is a purely performance metric about the boat's capabilities and how it's being sailed rather than how much progress they're making around the course. So you could be having fantastic VMG sailing at wind really quick. But if you're over the lay line, you're not actually progressing around the course. This is ignoring kind of those errors of where your boat is on the course and how well you're progressing. And it's just purely about how quick your boat is capable of going upwind or downwind. Basically, all these plots, the higher up you see upwind boat speed, the higher up you see upwind VMG, actually true wind angle, the lower down you see true wind angle for upwind, the better. So if these blobs push up the page, that's good. If these blobs push down the page, that's good. True wind speed, that's measured on the boat, tells you where they put the boat on the course. Um, you know, were they sailing in gusts or lulls? Um, so a little bit of strategy you can infer from that. Um, upwind, apparent wind angle, so that tells you really about the drag efficiency of the boat. But the one you really care about is the upwind true wind angle in terms of how quick the boat can get around the course. Um, upwind leeway this is an interesting one so actually these boats are making leeway about half a degree but you will see sometimes the boats will make negative leeway so that negative leeway is actually crabbing to windward and with the flaps on the foils and the cant angles they can really play with their leeway angles that's another area that's interesting to look at for how the teams are moding their boats same plots for downwind, except obviously VMG is velocity made good away from the wind. Again, these plots, the more the blobs are further up the page, the better. 
and again it switches around because you're going downwind the more these blobs are up the page the better it's actually from the first time uh, gbr and italy met in the round robin so you'll notice that their downwind vmg ineos is slightly slower uh, but not too bad so this is the first time they got a cuffing in this race upwind vmg about the same they got an absolute cuffing but it's because they fell off the foils and lost load in kind of one instance and i think they fell off and then they had a dodgy tack where they lost the load as well um, so that's the performance data um, for pure straight line speed. Got some nice plots for on favoured tacks. This takes where the true wind direction is relative to the course axis and how much time they spent basically on that long tack. You always probably want to be on the long tacks. That's taking you in terms of your velocity made over the course. It's giving you a better, better result. In bad air, there's calculation of proximity of the boats. Um, true wind speed plot over the race you see if the winds increased or decreased and lead this cuts out and goes out depending on if the course boys are being moved but you can just see that obviously the green was a you know they weren't too far about part about 200 meter difference and then Ineos fell off the foils and Luna Rossa pulled out over a kilometer lead whilst they had this incident and then actually kind of Ineos brought it back in towards the end of the race. Um, tax. So this is just purely manoeuvre. And these plots look at from 20 seconds before the tack to 20 seconds after. And it's the same for jibes when we go down. Um, and yeah, centred on a true wing and angle. So when it hits kind of head to wind is zero degrees. Um, you can see how they are carrying speed through the plot so actually Italy kind of almost accelerating up into um into head to wind and maybe this is because they're always trying to do a speed build into their tax as well um and you can actually see that as well because their true wind angle on Italy actually always goes out so this is head to wind down here so actually always bearing off before attack so that's why the boat speed's increasing uh, moving away from the wind and then they turn up um, and when you look at the VMG, you actually see that their Italy's VMG before the tack, as a result, is worse because they've been bearing away from the wind to build speed, but they carry more more VMG up into the eye of the wind. And then on the exit of the tack, they end up faster, so have less of a build to do. Um, this plot on the right is distance gained, and it's, bas it's basically VMG again. You know, this is distance velocity you know and over time it is velocity um made good to windward and basically the you know time along the bottom um and you can see that Ineos obviously faster on the entry so Ineos's line is moving ahead of the Italy one and then after the tack they converge back together I don't really like these plots too much because I think it shows you more about what their VMGs were entering the tacks and after the tax, and it does about specifically how much distance they lost during the tack in the middle. I'd like something more similar to what Nord Analytics do, so the manoeuvre loss in terms of metres, which I think is really helpful, and that helps you really think about is it worth tacking for a shift? So you know if a, ta if a shift lasts for 20 seconds and it is 5 degrees, then that is X amount of distance. Is that shift worth tacking for? And you compare it to your meters lost in a tack and you get your answer of whether it was worth tacking or not. So that's a really important metric that you need to know for all the boats you're sailing. And I love Nord Analytics and my Vacaros for learning that about the different boats I sell. And very quickly, I've got a good strategy picture in my head of what shifts are worth tacking for or not in terms of you know, the degrees I see move on my compass and how long I, I think that shift is gonna last for. Right, jumping back into the data. Um, this is actually the second race and I'll just show why I think um, these tack plots, you know, if you misread them, could be a bit misleading. So tax again, Ineos again in yellow. You can see they've just got higher V, uh, sorry, higher VMG before the tack, much better VMG than um, than Luna Rossa, the tack, they'd carry some of that VMG up into head twinned. Then actually on the X that attack, the VMG is pretty similar, 
So in many ways, Ineos has lost more in this tack because they started off with lots better VMG before the tack and after it, they're back to about equal with Italy. So if the tack hadn't been there and they just stayed on this VMG difference, their deltas would have gone apart. Um, so again, I think this kind of distance gained plot is a little bit misleading because you'd look at this and think, ah, oh, GBR's, Ineos's tax have got loads better in this later race against Italy. But actually what you're really seeing is a lot of this separation between the boats in terms of distance gained is because of the trajectories before they enter the tax. The GBR is just pulling away. And actually after the tack, after head to wind, the lines stay broadly parallel. They are gaining through attack through the 40 seconds, 20 seconds either side of the tack, but they're not gaining as much as if there wasn't attack at all. So I would prefer to see meters lost. I think maybe it's just in these plots, we've got too much time before the tack and it includes too much kind of just straight line. Yeah, this is 20 seconds for attack and that VMG data, um, for distance gain is including all this, it's 20 seconds Vineos. So it's included all of that straight line sailing as part of you know distance gained in attack. All of this is included, all of this included. Whereas really the attack only starts probably five seconds at most before the attack. And there's another page which um ERDB has put together where basically this is a plot of the course. And um I like to reduce the length down to just a minute of tail. So that, that's the tail at the bottom. You can see them coming in. These plots populate on the right. So some good metrics, lead, boat speed, velocity made good. And the bottom one, you can select what parameter you want, which is really nice. Um, I like your, which is the kind of leeway to see the pre-start. And you can just kind of play through the race like this and see so the VMG, they both jibe there. You can see Ineos had a bigger loss of VMG during that jibe. You know, kind of check on those incidents. And this video has really been for the geeks and I want to reward the geeks. And I've got a Lego model to give away, the Tai Horo Lego model. This has actually had a huge amount of design input from the designers at Emirates Team New Zealand. So if you want your very own boat designed by Dan Bernasconi, this is a chance. I'm giving one away um, very kindly. The uh, merchandise guys at America's Cup um, have given me one to give away. So in the description, there is a link to a Google form. Fill in the details there. I will draw a winner and in the next video announce who that winner is and get the Lego model sent out to you. So yeah, that's everything for me. Take care and see you around.